Hello, everyone. And how are all of you doing? We are back. We're back for another episode of Rob's Real and Ridiculous Podcast. It is episode number 35. Number 35. Man Cave Studios, Valley of the Sun. I hope you all had a good week. Things are getting just a little bit crazier out there, aren't they? Just a little crazier, especially as it relates to the world of sports. COVID continues to run rampant uh, around the NFL, so I'm definitely going to get into that. I'm definitely going to get into a few other things that came up this week that I think are are special things and points of note. Uh, More importantly, uh, this week... We have a great guest. We have a great guest waiting for us in the green room, Danny Marianino. He'll be joining us here just shortly. I'll bring him in. We're going to get into a lot of the cool stuff that he does. Quite a little, quite an entrepreneur, if you will, in terms of what he does in the music and uh, I consider arts industry. Uh, does some stand-up comedy. Uh, does a lot of writing as well. So we're going to get into that. I'll do a quick roundtable of some of the things that are going on with some upcoming fights as we close out the show. Uh, But for right now, we're going to get right into this interview with Danny Marinino. Danny. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Hey, buddy. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. You know, I, I, shit, I think I reached out to you like a couple months ago on a Saturday night and I'm like, Man, he's done some cool. He's done some cool things out there, and I, I wanted you to share it. So, uh, and we haven't seen each other, you know, with everybody Ages. now working from home. So it's been a long time. Yeah, stay yeah. Stay home, stay safe. But uh, how are things going in your world, real quick? Staying safe, family's good. Yeah, everybody's good. Everybody's, everybody's good. Staying yeah. safe, trying to trying to dodge Corona as yeah. much as possible. You no. know, isn't that uh, the truth? You know, it, 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 I mean, I'm obviously I miss hanging out with friends, yeah, family. You know, you're not yeah. seeing as much, uh, right? The movies, I miss going to the movies. That's yeah. a huge thing for me. Yeah, you know? yeah, big deal so, with the movies. I know they're trying to inch back in with a lot of stuff, but it seems like no sooner something opens up, things kind of get reeled back a little bit too. Yeah, I, I don't want to sit in a room with a bunch of people I don't know, coughing, no. sneezing, farting. You know what I'm right? saying? That's the truth, who, man. Who knows what's going on? Who in knows there, how it's spreading around, right? Just yeah. watching the comfort of our own home. So, well, cool, man. Well, thanks for joining again. I I just thought what I like to typically do is just kind of, I know you're not from here. I'm not from here. I'm from Boston, as you know. But just to kind of just give me a little background, just where you grew up from, and then we'll just kind of yeah, sure. work our way into a lot of the cool stuff that you're doing right now. Well, I grew up in New Jersey. Um, I, I, I went all through middle school, high school there. My parents had divorced and my dad always wanted to come to Arizona. He was, uh, we came out here when I was a kid, like in, uh, I must've been like 12 or 13 years old. We stayed in old Scottsdale at the Marriott. I remember it vividly. Nice. Uh, and, and my dad brought back all this crazy shit, like all this American Indian, like blankets and, and, yeah. and skulls. And he de- changed the whole decor of the house. My friends were yeah. like, who's your father, John Wayne? Like they totally, <laughs> he totally changed everything, but he wanted to come back here, you know, yeah. forever. Now you did. Now uh, you did. Dad like all the old West. Was your dad into the Western stuff? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. My it's, dad was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a movie that with John Wayne called The Comancheros mm-hmm. that oh, yeah. he talks about like it's a true story. You know. Yeah. <laughs> he, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he relate. he wanted to come here, and and uh, I was you know, I was really kind of at that point in life was what was I gonna do? I can stay in New Jersey, or I can come to Arizona. My best friend actually came out to go to ASU. So, you know, I was like, you know what? I'll go with my dad. It's a change of scenery, something yeah. new in life. I'm done with school. I finished high school. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I came out here and I had a friend too, you know, so I married his sister eventually as wow. well. Nice. So, you know, it, it worked, it worked out. I had, uh, I had, uh, I had a homie to hang out with. You know? So you, so you had, you spent, it sounds like a lot like me, you spent all up through high school, mm-hmm. right back in Jersey before you came here. Correct. Correct. All right, cool. Uh, which is cool. I mean, listen, I'm, yeah. I, I love living here, but I'm yeah. really glad I grew up in New Jersey. Same. I had, 
we had woods and I, I would ride my dirt bike to friends houses i'd cut school to go fishing i mean you're, you're not doing that stuff here you know no there was, a, there was an italian deli uh sandwich place called the hero i could yeah. literally like leave school and go get a big prosciutto sandwich Dude, like it was that, like the greatest thing you isn't know? that the truth the yeah. good sandwiches the bread the sauce buns we would even get a ship you know i'm i'm a little bit older than you but i'm like We'd get sauce buns for like 25 cents at the corner deli if we wanted to, too, you know? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Sauce and bread. Yeah, That's and all right you, with me. And, you know, you've, you've, you've got a lot of cool stuff out there, and I was just kind of doing a little bit of background on you, and thanks for sending me some of the information as well. But you, you guys, I, and we're going to get into your whole singing and – your what do you call heavy metal? Would you classify the music it's as? It's more like a like a punkish hardcore. Punkish hardcore, yeah. Okay, yeah. and I seen you guys just you had some videos out there of you know what you know your high school years, right? Just jamming in the backyard. Oh, that's so, that's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was for a school project. Oh, was I it? Found that video, yeah. So I, I, I for history class, we we're supposed to do some sort of a project on uh, to give you a little background. People who haven't yeah. seen that video. Yeah. We're supposed to do a school project on uh, the environment, and I just didn't do it. You know, I, I was not interested. And the teacher was like, "Listen, I'm going to give you this weekend to come up with something. Whether you come up with a, a, a written thing, an oral presentation, you can make a video." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, I can make a video." So we got together with some buddies in in my friend's backyard, and we wrote a song about that Dr. Seuss movie, The Lorax. Oh yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So it's all about the environment and the Lorax and, and my, my brother-in-law's in the video running around with a tree and guys. Right. I was wondering what the tree thing was in the background. Yeah. And, uh, and we, yeah. I come to class and the teacher's uh. like, okay, you got your project? And I go, yeah, it's on the videotape. And she pops this thing in the uh, VCR and yeah. and she's yeah. like, what is this? Yeah. But, you know, they, they were, she was high past. So yeah. You passed, you, know, you got get So that was yeah. with what, what, one of the big old VHS cameras? Oh yeah, that was a right. old school. Remember those VH. old school that was, days? That was like ninety two, probably ninety three. Yeah, so that, no, that's, yeah. That's those things are uh, obsolete and dinosaurs now, right? Oh yeah, 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 big time. So now you came out here to Arizona with your dad, right? Mm -hmm, you, did mm -hmm. you go to AS? Did you say you went to ASU? No, no, my brother-in-law uh, went to ASU. Your brother-in-law just... went to ASU. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me just ask you real quick. So I can't. I'm, I've got years on you. I was. I came out here in the early eighties. My uncle had moved out here. He loved it. Kind of the same thing. Fell in love with it. We came out family by family. And then my dad, the reason why I was asking about your dad, too, my dad's a big Westerns guy. John mm -hmm. Wayne, this, that, and the other. So he loved it out here, too. But it was, I'll tell you, man, it was culture shock for me when I first came out here. So I came out here in 81. Whoa. And I'm like, wow. It really felt like, you know, I'm glad I'm here now. Love it like you do, right? But I wouldn't change yeah. my upbringing for anything. But did you have any type of culture shock when you came out or no? Well, yeah, because when I moved to Arizona, it was, I, remember the end of Goodfellas? He goes, now I order macaroni, I get egg noodles and ketchup. Yeah. That's kind of what I felt like, you know. And, uh, you know, I lived in North Scottsdale, uh, Bell and 58th Street area. Oh, yeah, and yeah. My, and my brother-in-law lived uh, in the dorms. So I would have to drive all the way down Scottsdale Road, or at the time Pima was the fast track, you know. To go yeah. down to ASU, there was no 101, there was no 51, stopped at Shea, you know, yeah. it was it was a lot different, and uh, I couldn't find foods, uh, up until like the last couple, really only a couple of years ago, right. I had friends sending me out Saucy Susan, which is like a peach apricot sauce that's real okay. popular in New Jersey, yeah, yeah. Taylor, Taylor Ham pork roll, I'd have sent out, I, I got people shipping me Wise potato chips, yeah, I mean, okay, right, Wise, well, we had Wise yeah. too, hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I couldn't get the stuff that I liked, and 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 even years later when I played in a band, I we you know our trailer. I remember I went to a shop right in New Jersey, and I bought four cases of Roma tomatoes and Cento. I, yes. I, I, our whole front of our van was in the in the, uh, in the trailer on the U-Haul was all packed with like food and goods that oh, I was bringing shit. back. And I had and I had friends out here that were from New York and yeah. New Jersey. That I made friends with, they were like, hey, get me two cases of this or that. So, like, I came back, I'm like a dealer with, like, Italian yeah, goods. The yeah. people are on that. That's the truth. Yeah, because you just have those. It's really improved over the years, to your point, but there's still those specialty items, right? Yeah. That you need to get, you need to get from back home. Like, we just got Entenmann's. 
right last like year you know <laughs> my my mother-in-law is coming out to, in her suitcase with like four boxes and i'd have her get the individual wrapped ones yeah because they last longer you open up the box of crumb cake a coffee cake you, you, know, you got to eat it in a couple of days oh yeah the individual wrapped ones you can you got a little time you, you got know? time yeah. yeah yeah and then as you know out here i mean obviously the bread will last maybe a day or two <laughs> yeah oh yeah because yeah. of the water you yeah. know i got a, a buddy that has a couple of restaurants out here pizzerias and what he used to always say i don't know if he still does i haven't i haven't gone to his restaurant in a while but uh he would say he'd fly in a lot of the he'd fly in his water for the yeah. bread, the dough, to make the cannolis, all that good stuff. So the water has something to do with it. So yeah, so that's just similar to me. I mean, it's an adjustment, but uh, I'm happy I'm here, man. And we're, we're heading into the best time of the year now, right, too. They we're getting out of our winter, as I like yeah, to Yeah, I, I did right? day off today. I did day off, and I was yeah. sitting in the patio, smoking a cigar, watching yeah. Dawn of the Dead outside. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I jumped in the pool. It was a little chilly, you know. It is, so. but it, you know what? It feels good on the body, too, with the cold water sometimes, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. All right, so I know you got a lot of businesses and stuff going. I, before I get into your your um, your company, Total Gavon, um, I know you were tied into sports for a little bit, and you kind of you, you got more of, of the other things that you're doing now, so you're mm -hmm. not a big follower like you were, right? But mm -hmm. foot, football – a little bit. Yeah, right? I, yeah, yeah. I watched a lot more football when yeah. I was a little younger. And yeah. as, as the years got on, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of, when, when ASU actually, when the Cardinals played at ASU, yep. I would obviously go to games a lot more because it was like right by the house. Yep. Since they moved to Glendale, I got lazy. And, you know, yeah. I haven't been yeah. out that way too much. Yeah. it's You know what? I'll say, because I'm out, I'm out off of Carefree in 27. So mm -hmm. I'm a little bit closer. To, I'm closer to Westgate. But um, yeah. They did a hell of a job out that way. I will have oh, to say great, that, yeah. right? Didn't they though? I mean, it's yeah. a trip, you know, if you're on the on the east side or north side of the valley. But um, I, I have to say, overall, they did a nice job just with that whole area for the Coyotes and the Cardinals. They did a yeah, good job. Yeah, the, the there. Coyote Stadium is really cool. It's we nice. Seen a couple, we saw a couple games over there already. Yeah, my, it, my wife's a big uh, hockey fan. She's a puck person, right? Because I'm yeah, a big yeah. hockey guy. I grew up playing yep. hockey. Did she have a favorite? Does she have a favorite team? Or she's a de she's a Devils fan. Devils, yeah. New Jersey yeah. Devils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had some good teams. Really good teams. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, your company. Mm -hmm. um, I was out on your website the other day. It's pretty much just recently started in terms of uh, like distribution and retail items. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I had the website for a while. Yeah. Um, that I that I had because uh, I have a few books that I released through the years, and yeah, well, uh, you know I, that too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I sell them all on Amazon. Yeah, but, I saw but, that. Yeah. But what was happening? People would hit me up, and they were like, "Hey, I want to buy a book, but I want it signed, and I didn't have inventory here." because they're buying it from Amazon and Amazon has the books and Amazon ships it directly to the customer. So I'm like, I, I don't, I don't have them. So I said, all right, let me put up a couple books on my website. Yeah. And I created a little, you know, I put a blog up. I write some funny stuff once in a while. And um, then I started putting up all my old band, all our albums were all out of print. So I put up all the albums for a digital download, cheaper than iTunes. <laughs> and, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> kind of undercut the record label a little bit. Uh, and then, uh, and then you know, so I put those up. And then, um, you know, I started selling some stuff here and there. And, you know, I kind of, I have a friend that owns a skate company here in town called AZPX. They're okay. like Arizona's like local skateboard company. They, oh, skateboard they, company. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They, do, they do a lot for... Um, the skate parks in town and yep. benefits the stuff. They, they got their own line of skateboards and clothing. And my friend Rob, who, who owns the company, he, for years we would give out his decks and stuff at our shows. And he, uh, he kind of was talking to him about how he does his shirts and everything else. And he kind of got a little bug under me to, why don't, I, why don't I try this? And for years I was getting people asking me for shirts for my band. And, you know, we were, haven't played in years. We did one show, yeah. reunion show, like a couple of years ago. So, uh, I figured, hey, let me let me let me try this out, and it started taking off pretty quick. So yeah, you got some cool stuff out there, and that's totalgavone.com, right? Yeah, totalgavone.com. Totalgavone.com. Yeah. So uh, get some like get some cool coffee mugs, right? Hats, t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of Italian sayings. All Italian are, saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like, I think like, I like, told it. So I'm Italian. I'm Italian as well, half mm -hmm. Italian. Um, my whole mom's side. Uh, we call it the Geraci family, all Italian. So 
I share. I'll, I'll continue to share. I shared it out to a few cousins, by the way. Cool, so, cool, cool. Yeah, Thank you. Your site, because I know you. they'll appreciate the stuff out there. So that's good that you're starting up with that. Um, your 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 uh, your band or your group, uh, Northside Kings. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So we, uh... let, let, let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about um, did going back to your Jersey days and mm -hmm. doing the project for school. Did that kind of lead you into? Well, I always your music, I played in, yeah, bands, I played your in whole, bands and your whole time, your whole life for the most yeah, part. Growing I, up, that was a, a something you enjoyed. Yeah, through yeah. through high school, I played in bands, and yeah. when I came out here, my brother-in-law, who was going to ASU at the time, uh, we started a band together out here, and then uh, I joined this other band from New York, and I actually put out an album that was like it's about nineteen or twenty years old that was like the first album that i put out like on a national release yeah and uh we went on tour we went to europe we did the six-week tour through wow. europe and it was cool because you know i wasn't able to drink in the u.s but if i can go to europe I could, yeah. I could do, do whatever, whatever the hell you wanted man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i was young so it was, it was yeah. a blast oh and, hell uh, yeah and that band kind of me and the drummer had uh, it was that band was called cause for alarm and me and the drummer had uh well, actually, the singer went one way off the airplane. The rest yeah. of us went this way. Yeah. And we basically started playing the songs that we were writing for a new album and turned it into Northside Kings. So Nice. The Northside was... Kings, the name is almost a parody. It sounds like a tough guy name. Yeah. But it, it came from, uh, there's this friend of mine, Tyler, here in town, and we were looking for a, a band name. And, and, you know, we were already kind of playing under some goofy name and yeah. locally. And he said... Uh, we were teasing about something, and he's like, oh, you never leave the north side. What do you think you are, the north side king? Yeah. And I was like, that, mm, that's yeah, a good that's idea. A good name. I like I'm that. I'm that little light yeah. bulb. That's you know? it. Now, you so. you branded that. That's one of your T-shirts, obviously, as well. I kind of like the logo. Yeah, we got a, like, we got a like couple. like the logo. Yeah. We got a couple of those out there. So. Yeah. So take me behind the scenes, if you will, just a little bit on what's, what, what is that like, right? What's it like to be part of a band? And what was, what, now, where are you? Singer? Uh, well, I originally, originally I played guitar, guitar? and sang. Okay. Uh, and the, the reason we, we recorded a demo and um, the demo, the quality was great. We didn't have a singer and I actually sang on the demo because we needed, so I'm not really singing. I'm just hollering, yeah. Yeah. but, uh, <laughs> You know, but but we could at the time we wanted. So let me do the vocals. We'll try to find somebody that can kind of mimic this. Sure. And then we kind of let the we just kind of forgot about it. And then yeah, a year or two later, uh, the bass player of the band was like, "Why don't we do something with this? Why don't we play some shows? Why don't you shop it around?" And I had sent. I said, "All right, let's just shop it." So I sent it to a few record labels, and uh, a, a brand new kind of label that had really good distro picked it up, and they were like, "We want to put it out." And I said, we don't have a singer. He said, no, you're, you're the singer. So I ended up singing and playing guitar. But for the type of band that we are, you know, kids want to grab that microphone. They want to get in your face and sing. You know, they want to sing the yeah, songs. Right. And, and they were bumping the microphone into my teeth while I was playing guitar at shows. Oh, and damn. It, it, yeah. I said, we need, to, we need to find a guitar player, an, an extra one, and I'll jump off the guitar and I'll just sing. Yeah. And that's what I, I hate. I hate doing, really doing the vocals. I'd rather play guitar, but it worked out better that way. And, you know, so the studio, I still play on the albums, but, uh, you know, live, I just, uh, I just sing or yell. Just sing. Well, I may have to call you out to sing something before the show is over. Oh, I don't know. The, the, the <laughs> dogs are still barking. I won't do that to you. <laughs> the whole neighborhood start howling. <laughs> no! Oh, there you go. Um, so, you know, guitar, the guitarist, Pretty sad news this week, right? With Eddie Van Halen. Oh yeah, yeah. He, that guy was unbelievable. I um, I when, I used to have a furniture store in Scottsdale when I when I moved out here. I saw that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I opened up a small business and it grew and grew, and um, but before I closed, I mean, I had like a ten thousand square foot store in North Scottsdale, and you know, the economy took a dive in two thousand six and seven. Sure did. Yeah. That's when I that's when I closed the store, but. Um, I sold furniture to uh, what's his ex-wife's name, uh, Valerie Bertinelli. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. She, she had a store. She had a house in North Scottsdale. Oh, I had uh, no idea she was out yeah, here. Oh, yeah, wow. she, lived, she actually lived next door to Patty Hearst of oh, all people. Oh no, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> she came in the store and she was walking around, and I, I remember I said to one of the guys, "I go, boy, that looks like Valerie Bertinelli, but 
she looks kind of beat up, you know, because she was <laughs> yeah. in sweatpants and just kind of yeah, mangled no up. Ma you no know? makeup, right? Just yeah. yeah. So my sales guy comes up. He goes, "Hey, this lady wants to buy this couch." He goes, "But uh, she wants to pay with a check, and she wants a, she wants a delivery today." I'm like, "Get the hell out of here! I'm not taking yeah. a check. I'll pay with a credit card like everybody else." <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, he comes back a couple minutes later with her driver's license. Will you take her check? I'm like, "Oh, that really is Valerie Bernelli." Yeah, she was super nice. Uh, was she? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I sent the the guys to her house, and um, she was. I don't know if she was married or dating this guy at the time. Yeah. But uh, the guy said, uh, "This is a funny story." The guy, the guy, one of the guys that worked for me had a lot of tattoos, and the the guy Valerie Bernelli was with said, "You got a lot of cool tattoos." He goes, "I was thinking about getting Valerie tattooed on my arm," and <laughs> and Valerie Bernelli kind of looked at him, and, and my buddy goes. You know, that's supposed to be bad luck, you know? And Valerie Bertinelli goes, yeah, look at Eddie's arm. Oh, yeah, no shit. Yeah. But she Damn. was super cool, super nice. He was an unbelievable guitar player. I love that guy, those stories. That guy created, for what we know, for heavy rock music today, right. he, he, he created the Floyd Rose tremolo, that, that whole bending, that, wow, that whole... Yeah, amazing. He, unbelievable guitar player i would say the beethoven of our generation and that and that's, and that's what a lot of people say you know because you yeah. throw them in that category with what Jimi hendrix right yeah yeah so um yeah and i you know i'm like i said i'm before you're before you a lot older than you so i grew you know, that was like it for us you know 80s time right how, how crazy yeah. is it david lee yeah. roth outlived eddie van Halen? no shit so uh, <laughs> Of, of all people isn't that crazy of all yeah. things you know it's funny so we had a a thread going with my cousins and some friends last night for our, from our fantasy football group about you know his passing and stuff and i'll never forget i went to visit a cut my cousin mikey g out to california this is back in i want to i want to say like eight i will say let's say 83 mm -hmm. and then me and my cousin laura went out to a bar late at night on hollywood boulevard you know they had those cool little you know yeah yeah off the rainbow thing, room bars, rainbow room bars and uh i walked we walked in we went up to the bar and ordered a drink and I, she goes look over to the left and it was david lee roth with three girls draped on him <laughs> oh of course yeah, <laughs> having yeah. a drink of course i didn't go up and bother him and say hi i'm not one of those guys to do that anyways if i bumped into him obviously i'd talk to him but um and I says, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, he, yeah, this guy's living the life, and he's outlived them all with all his crazy, crazy. Or even, or even Keith Richards. Keith Richards, like Keith man. Richards Look at that group, going, dude. Van Halen died, you know? Dude, how the hell is that? And I just before, just before I, you know, I we jumped on uh, today. My wife told me I, his name. You may know his name. I, I, I can't remember what what his name is now. The guitarist for Red Hot Chili Peppers passed away. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know the guys. I, 60, I know Flea, the bass player. Yeah, but, Flea's, uh, uh, yeah, at 64 he was too. So, wow. Yeah, shit, man. You never know what happens. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's somebody can uh, party like a rock star and not a damn thing happens and somebody gets hit with the big C, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Eddie and, and, and goodbye. So tough, tough times. So so what was that like? What was that like? Like, you, you know, you traveled overseas, right? A little bit. Yeah, it wasn't as glorious as you think. I mean, yeah. you know, people. Uh, There's some think, oh, you're in a band. that goes with it, right? Yeah, you, people think you're in a band. You're in a tour bus. Yeah, I've never toured in a tour bus. Yeah, uh, I've I've toured a lot in a van with the gear in the van with us. In the and that's van. how a lot start you know? too, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a big tour, a big deal tour for us when we had a trailer in the back, yeah. like a little U-Haul trailer. That was like, oh, we're living, we're living in luxury here. Yeah, but um. You know, it, 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 listen, it's the one thing I, I tell people about all the time when they talk about, like, what's like to play in a band. I'm not as much of a guy who really enjoys the live performance. Yeah. Uh, it's not really my thing. I, you know, I'm more of a homebody. I don't like to, you know, tour like that. I mean, it's fun to see other cities and sure. be able to, I mean, I've had experiences and seen places that I'll, I'll never be, you know, able to see just on my Again, own. Yeah, right, I won't even go. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, but, uh, you know, to it's the camaraderie of hanging out with your friends. There you go. To me, that's the best part. It's the, yeah. you know, you, you've got a good group of guys that you love to be with, you love to hang out with, and, you know, after two weeks, you got nothing to say to each other, so all you do is bust each other's balls the whole time. Yeah, right. And, and, and how how can you out-prank this guy, you know, and, and, and that's, to me, is the fun part. That and 
the writing aspect and recording in the studio that, you know, I, I got to put out four or five, five albums like worldwide that, that we did through the years. And, um, yeah, the you creating, love the writing you said, right? The you creating love the writing. of it. Yeah. yeah. When you, when you get, when you, when you're a practice and everybody's you know coming up with this, that, and you, you put it together and you hear their practice live, it's cool. But then when you get the studio and everybody does their thing and you hear it come together, that's, that's, the finished product, when you got that CD in your hand, and you're like, "Man, this is awesome. We yeah. made this." That that to me is my favorite part. Yeah. So, not to get too deep on creativity, right? Mm -hmm. But there's things that spark everybody, right? To create the song or something that happens, and that, you know, sure, sure, a passing or a love you loved one you love whatever it is you know yeah, in yeah, any yeah. genre so is is there do you, where do you get that from is it just well, i was you know back back when i had northside kings like i don't know if i could even even duplicate that today yeah you know i, I owned a business i was stressed out constantly yeah uh being a small business owner you know i had a ridiculous nut uh, over my head, you know, between rent and a warehouse and two trucks and five delivery guys and sales guys. Sure. And, you know, I, I was definitely, uh, I would say a, a little bit more of a fired up type guy, you know, back then. It was, yeah. you felt like you were fighting the world. Right. And, and, uh, you know, that totally went into playing music because at that point there, I had a little bit more of an attitude, like, don't mess with me because I'm going to crush you, you know, yeah. and, and, and that kind of went into our music. Yeah. You know, That's and, good, you know like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have that kind of feeling anymore. So, you know, what am I going to write about? Uh, well, we get older, we get, you know, we, right. We get older, we get wiser, right? Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. It's time. our new song. It's called Big ZD. Time changes us, brother, doesn't it? It does. It does. It can. It just does. You don't realize it till it happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love it. So let's go. Let's go over to your um, your writing, not just about the music, but you've written some books. I know yeah. you've been on some local shows as well, right here in the valley, right? Some news. Yeah, yeah. The local yeah, news I, with Channel 15 or whatever. Was it 15? Channel uh, Channel 3. Yeah. Channel 3 News. Yes, I watched that that day. So. Um, what inspires you to do that? Now that book writing is entirely different than music, right? Sure. Oh, obviously, sure. So, right? Yeah. Well, after after we had stopped playing, you know, I had uh, I, I've always been I had a, I used to have a website years ago with some friends called I Can Smell Your Brains dot com, and we wrote like we wrote movie reviews and music reviews and funny articles and interviewed a lot of different actors and musicians and stuff and uh, you know so I've always been kind of into writing, but. Uh, uh, I the first book I put out, uh, I got into a scuffle with another musician years ago, mm -hmm. and I, I got a lot of hate mail from his fans from it. So mm -hmm. I, I I had assembled a lot of it together in a notebook and was showing some friends, and we were laughing at some of these messages. They were so horrible, and like you know, like today you see like mean tweets with uh, Jimmy Kimball. Like I'm the OG mean tweets. Let me tell you, really? like, I, because, I, of I, that, because of that incident. Oh yeah, because of that deal. So. I, um, I, I, a couple of friends were like, you should put this together in a book. It's kind of funny. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. So I started to work on that and I ended up putting a whole book together. And, um, Amazon has a really good self publishing program. And, uh, I, I didn't bother even shopping a book. I went right to the self publishing program. I know from playing in the band. So you record an album, right? Mm -hmm. there, everybody's got their hands in the pot. So, so here's your CD. Now the record label has your CD. Maybe they they give you a dollar, say a dollar out of the album just to get a round number, and they get they sell that album. So now, say they sell that album for three dollars and fifty cents to a distributor. Mm -hmm. So there's three dollars and fifty cents. The distributor in turn sells that album to a record store for maybe six bucks, right? So now the record store has got it, and the record store in turn sells that to a customer. And the, cust the customer maybe pays ten, twelve dollars, say for that CD. So everybody's making money, but the artist is making a dollar, a dollar fifty. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I knew that the book was going to be like that as well. And I figured, you know, if I even if I sell less books, yeah, I own the content of it instead of a record sure. label owning the content or a book publisher owning the content. If I want to take the book off, I can. If I want to change the book, I want to do something different, I can do it. 
And uh, I said, rather, even if I sell less books, I'll make more per book if I, if I do it myself. So I did. And the book did really well that way. Nice. And, um, and then, you know, I kind of stole that concept from Ice Cube because oh, Ice Cube, no kidding. Yeah. he's no longer on a record label anymore. If Ice Cube puts out his own albums on his own record label, he's got distribution through his own record label. He's the guy who's selling it to a record store for 6 or $7. Yeah. So that's all him outside of the profit or the manufacturing cost of the CD. He's he's cutting out a lot of that money. So I kind of took the that middle, concept. Cut out the middle person. Yeah, yeah. I took that concept and did it with the first book. It did well. Then I did another book on revenge movies. I love revenge movies. Yeah, uh, I know. And nobody's I know, I done a that. book on it. Yeah. yeah, who's ever done a book on revenge movies? I and and the it. book's got like all kinds of interviews with people from like Lan the actor Lance Henriksen, Fred the Hammer Williamson. I interviewed him in the book. I interviewed the, the sensei from Karate Kid, the bad guy. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. No you know, kidding. Cobra, yeah. Cobra Kai guy. Cobra Kai, yeah. yeah uh, John Kreese. Now. Yes, yeah, no. yes. I interviewed him in there. Is he doing I, Geico commercials, is it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's Cobra Panda now. Yeah, season. Cobra Panda. Yeah. yeah. And then I interviewed uh, Heather Lion Camp from Nightmare on Elm Street. All, all people that were, you know, Freddy Krueger's revenge. Yeah. That's all his, his whole deal is coming back to the kids of Elm Street for yeah. what the parents did. So, uh, so I did that. And then I did another book uh, on, on movie quotes. That's funny. And then I did another book of all stories from when I was a kid that's completely inappropriate and hilarious. I love it. It's about and six, I did an audio book on that one. It's about which six is on, books, right? Four books total four right books, now. Four books total. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's what I'm going to say, because I'm not going to go into detail about anything, but um, I know you categorize it as the scuffle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you and I are both salespeople. <laughs> There's an opener and a closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You close business. I'll leave I it at did. that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you certainly <laughs> close, brother. I love it. Um, stand up comedy. Are you, are you still doing it? I no, saw well, first off, well, nobody's doing it. Yeah, I'm not going Oh, well, nobody's doing right anything now. now. I don't care <laughs> where the hell you are, right? Yeah, yeah, did a little bit uh, of that, right? I did a little bit. Yeah. Here's the problem with, with doing the stand up I like it. But yeah. I don't like going out at night. So right, you know, and that's the problem. You got to go to like a place. You got to be there maybe ten. It's a weekend nights. Night. Yeah. yeah, you know, even weekdays because you got to practice. So you got to do open mic stuff during the week, and you go up and get up against you know five to ten people, and just until you master your craft, you got to just keep going out and doing keep it. Going doing out, it. yeah. And I'm not. It's just not me, you know. Yeah. I, I I don't like it. The last book that I did is all funny stories and storytelling, and I and I. I did an audio version of it as well. It's on Audible, and I I made CDs, and it's almost like it's almost like a comedy thing. So I'm thinking about recording more, uh, you know, albums like that of me just telling fun because I got a lot of funny stories. So of me telling humorous stories and just just do that, you know. Good stuff. Enjoy, Heck, I enjoy yeah. that. Hey, you, you went know? out. You gave it a shot. No, I want to say give it a shot. You yeah, yeah. something that interested you. You did it, and then you like, I eh, you know. Yeah, I still, I mean, one, you know, once in a blue moon, if somebody needs something for something, you know, I had a friend that uh, was doing some show and he needed an opener for the show for a touring comedian and I, and I did it, you know, so. Living life, man. Yeah, yeah. You have a passion for something, you go out and do it and you execute, right? And then sometimes yep. you realize like, well, yeah, I, I'm glad I did it. It's off my list yeah. now, so to speak. There's a lot of exactly. things I think I want to do or like or start or whatever. And it's like, you know what, I'm going to go through with it. And then, you know, if it's, I realize now it's not for me, I'll, you know, get yep, a yep. lot of it. You know, that's what kind of got me started with this whole damn podcast. I talked about it for two years and, uh, and I found doing it. So uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes, but it's just, I'm enjoying it. So there's no, nothing monetary in it for me, you know, there you go. So I'm <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. I got a few other things that just some fun stuff I want to get into before we close it out. But I, I think what, what I'd just like to bring up uh, is, you know, something that I feel is obviously important and somebody that's close to you with, with your buddy, Ryan Butler, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who's in need of a, of a liver transplant, right? right He's got yeah, a, very, he... a very unique and rare disease, liver disease called Wilson's disease, where Correct. it's what copper builds up in the liver and other organs from what I read. It's weird. Yeah. I never even heard of it. But yeah, because uh, people automatically think what, what drinking, right? Oh yeah, First especially because he was in a band, the liver, right? Band drink, and he was not a partier, from what I from what I read. He was the guy in our band where 
we would do, you know what an Irish car bomb is, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably the worst yeah. thing to do before you're about to play a show, a punk show <laughs> in a 110-degree room with everybody oh, sweating. We would all do car bombs before. We, sometimes we even up to the bus bombs, which yeah. is in a picture. That's oh, really damn. stepping up. Oh, yeah. He's drinking water while we're doing the car bombs. He, wow. I, I've known him for 20 years. He, he never drank because his mother had Wilson's disease. That's and right. And he knew that he, he just felt in his heart, I got to take care of my liver because this is a hereditary thing. I think an uncle had it too. Sure. You know, so, um, so yeah, but he, he ended up getting it. And uh, he uh, he's already been in the hospital twice for livers uh, that were that came in. But the livers were real fatty, and ah. uh, the, the doctors didn't feel that they were good. Knock on wood, right now, today he should be going in. They're flying in the liver right now. No kidding. And uh, he should be going in. But we did a GoFundMe for him. Yes, please talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a GoFundMe for him because he's not. He's a self-employed guy. He he owned a recording studio here in town. Um, you know, he's not recording anybody anymore right, right now. Right. Right. Matter of fact, he sold off most of the stuff in his studio just to kind of help him pay his bills you know during this time so this is a guy who built this like nice studio and he's recorded like albums for got one of the guys in rancid and he's done like a lot of a lot of big stuff yeah but uh but he had to start selling stuff off and and he um he's gonna be out of work for a while so we did sure. a go find me uh, and there's a link on Total Gavon where you can go there and if you want to put anything towards to help him out even if it's ten dollars to help and uh, I, yeah. I created on my website a, a shirt and two different pairs of socks that are kind of funny that, yeah. you know, that also goes to benefit them. There's awesome. actually something coming up in November that's going to be really cool. That's going to be like a, I think a, like a whole streaming concert uh, that's, that they're doing for them. I recorded something for nice. uh, yes, yesterday. So Nice. So they can go to your site, totalgavone.com, right? So it's mm -hmm. total, G A V O N E.com for listeners. Well, Danny and I will also be on YouTube as well. Yep. Um, so if you want to go ahead and, and pledge or donate something to uh, to help cool. out, which is a tremendous cause, uh, appreciate cool, all cool. the listeners to and do that. And he's the nicest guy. He's yeah. like one of those guys that, like, anything you need, he'll, he'll do for you. I talk to him every single day on a text. Me, him, and my buddy Todd, all three of us have been in this, like, <laughs> text chat for like two years yeah. and uh and it's just constant and yeah you know he's like you would never know that he's going through this you know by just got a good attitude phone. right a beat the bad brains wrote a song called uh positive mental attitude pma that dude i think they wrote that song about yeah because he's got such a great attitude you know that's that's awesome so hey who knows maybe this is a little bit of luck you know we're doing the show on a day of Sounds like there could be yeah. a good opportunity for him to get a good uh, new liver. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so God bless, man. Thoughts and prayers. And, and, you, and anybody keep out there on that, Danny. Sure. Yeah, People yeah. Should update your update your driver's license, man. Become donors. You know Absolutely. how much I can help donor. somebody out. Yes, yeah. I, I totally agree. I, you know, We're going to take it with you to the grave. We're going uh, well, to throw in the garbage anyway. <laughs> that's it. Where's it going to go? A lot of people yeah. are getting cremated now as it is, you know, yeah. and, uh, and you know, I, I know everybody has different views and things, but my thought on things is if you can save a life, something I don't need, here we go, right? And, and obviously you're thinking the same. Yeah. Before I get to the fun questions, I do have one, one, uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up. So you've done a, like, have you done like appeared in like three or four kind of like horror type flicks or whatever, it is, whatever you really want to call bad. those movies? Really <laughs> bad. They're not even B movies. They're like B movies. <laughs> but one of them, uh, one of them, the the director of uh, Sean Tretta, he's actually like a writer on uh, Mayans now. Oh, I uh, love that, that show. Yeah, he's one of the writers on Mayans. So but, which uh, one, which one did he do with you? Blood Moon Rising, Blood Moon Rising, or no, 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 no. <laughs> Blood, Moon, Blood Moon Rising. I kill Ron Jeremy in that movie. I'm one of the zombies. <laughs> kill oh, Ron shit, I gotta look for that part. All right, but, uh, I love it. But no, uh, he did. Uh, he did Death Factory, Bloodletting. Okay. Uh, I'm only in the beginning of the movie. I That's play like right. a, I play a junkie, I'm like the chubbiest junkie in an alley you've ever seen, and I get shot in the head. Every movie I'm in, I get killed like pretty quick. No. <laughs> well, you know what? Who cares, man? I mean, you got you know, it's uh, a, a friend of mine from back east. I just interviewed him uh, about like I want to say a month ago, Peter Crafts. 
Mm -hmm. he's he's a throw in, not a throw in, but like a small bit part for all the Boston movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. authentic. So he's done like The Departed. He did The Fighter, small bit piece. But just the experience has to be cool, right? Yeah, it is. It is. It's fun. But you know, you you sit around for hours upon hours. Waiting, right? <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a movie called Vampageddon that I'm in. I got it written down. I do have so, Vampageddon written down too, along with Nightmare it's Alley. It's the worst, yeah. <laughs> the worst movie you've ever seen. And I'm, I play like some stoner guy named Booner or something. <laughs> and like the lines that I have are ridiculous, but there's a scene where I get my head punched off by a vampire. Like my head gets punched off and I, you know, my clothes got like fake blood and stuff all over them. Well, I got stuck on the set that night, like all night long out in the desert. And I had no shirt because my shirt was soaked with like food coloring, you know, corn syrup. It was disgusting. And I didn't think of bringing any clothes and nobody else had a shirt that fit me. So uh, basically, you know, in like November out in like the desert, sitting by a fire freezing the whole time until till we were able to get out of the, out of the set because it was all blocked off. Uh, do good stuff, man. You, you've got, you got a, a shitload of good stories though to share. <laughs> Right, you got a lot of cool stuff to look back on, man. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. All right, so we're gonna do some fun, a couple fun things I asked you to do, which I appreciate you doing, just mm -hmm. to kind of wrap up the show, uh, especially since you're a, a paisan. So I asked you about. Um, well, first of all, we'll get well. We'll get into the restaurant bakery stuff. Um, who would you like to have? Like we talked about, who would you want to have dinner with? Right, three people, yeah, yeah. dead or alive. So I'll let you kind of share with the audience, and then I'm going to chime in on that as well. Well, dead. If it was dead, dead people, right. I, I would have to go with uh, Mo, Larry, and Curly. Stooges were the best, weren't they? They were the best. They're still the best. I mean, they are awesome. I, I have. The I YouTube them set. all the time, dude. Yeah, I, I got the complete set that's got them all, all the shorts in chronological order. I watched the three stooges all the time and you know that that kind of a dinner would just turn into like mayhem oh my so, god you know yeah. it's, i don't know how the hell it came up but i'm always on youtube just i watch joe rogan podcast i watch music i'm watching old shows to show the kids my wife she's she's younger than me and i'm like me and my dad grew up watching the freaking three stooges right yeah. i mean when yeah. even before when i was in we were going to work and I was still living at home would be watching it before we took off. We're big Abbott and Costello fans too. Yeah, yeah, Abbott yeah. And Costello to me, and we were watching some old ones the other, a uh, couple of weeks ago on a Saturday morning. And you know, my wife was laughing. One of my kids was laughing too, but it's like, there's something really unique about black and white still to me. Yeah. How I agree. It was done back then. Right. There's a draw there that to me, I know they later, they converted some stuff to color or whatever. I'm all black and white for those shows, right? If you watch, if you watch Laurel and Hardy. Right, Laurel uh, and Hardy, yeah. What, what was March of the Wooden Soldiers. Right, right. And you watch that in color, you're like, ah. Oh, yeah. I would much rather watch Mr. Boogity and yeah. all them little piggies and everything. All that black stuff. Black and white, you know? You know, it's funny, and I know you like all the horror flicks and everything else. For, for, for me, like when I was growing up with the monsters and the vampires and Frankenstein, I remember growing up back home, my dad telling me that it was an Abbott and Costello movie that they had done where it was Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and, and Dracula. Mm -hmm. And I remember writing in, he wrote into the TV station, the local TV station in Worcester, Mass, to say, could you put this on on one of the upcoming Saturdays? And they That's put it great. on, I was watching that, and you just you, you don't forget that stuff. And they're, to your point, they're classics. I've got all those in DVDs as well. The, uh, yeah, the they, they did the a lot of them, I should movie. say. Yeah, it was good, they wasn't a, it? They did a mummy movie. The mummy one, yeah. yeah. I think they did The Invisible Man. They did do The Invisible Man. Yep. And then they also did, it was only on the uh, Abner Costello hour, but they introduced Creature from the Black Lagoon before the movie came out. It was oh, on their like TV show. Oh shoot, I forgot all about that. I forgot about yep. that that whole character. I don't know if I saw that one. I have it was only it like out. a five minute bit. Five minute thing they, in, in yeah. that one hour series. Uh, in that show. one hour series, yeah. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna talk about alive. Alive, I gotta go with the, the the two right off the top, the two action kings. You're talking Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone. Oh yeah. You know, and then I'm a huge Bruce Campbell fan. Bruce Campbell did the Evil Dead movies, Army of Darkness. Okay, yeah. He's, kind of, he's got the uh, Ash versus Evil Dead show that was on uh, Showtime. He's, yep. he's a funny, funny horror guy. Yeah. You know, 
Briscoe oh, County Jr. was in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Burn oh, Notice yeah. was another show we had. Oh, he had Burn Notice, too. No shit. That was a good show. Yeah. I like Burn Notice. That was, that was like one. an old USA show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on USA. Yeah. I think and, so. And for me, brother, I mean, I, I was going to ask you about him because I didn't end up jumping. I was going to go look him up because the name didn't hit mm -hmm. me right away. Um, but forget about Schwarzenegger and Stallone and some of my favorite action movies, I don't give a shit how far fetched there was the expendables. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have, I don't know if you can see this, but I have Arnold Schwarzenegger from Predator. Oh, on my oh arm. shit, dude. Wow. And it says, uh, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Yes. <laughs> how great was that movie? Oh, uh, Predator. My two favorite movies, uh, top two. Well, if you're going to go three. Yep. Top is going to be, and I can't give you which one I like better because it's impossible because I change that when I watch it. Yeah. So Predator. Yeah. First Blood. Those are my top oh. two. And then Goodfellas. The original First <laughs> Blood. Yeah. Didn't you throw in Goodfellas for sure? That's yeah, like, yeah. that's a must. Yeah. We could yep. probably go down the list real quick and then and you end up at Casino, the Godfather, the first Godfather, right? Godfather 2. Godfather two was good too. Yeah, yeah three was I, I, okay. I liked three, but it was not. I saw like three the in the movies. Two. I liked it. You know, yeah, it was uh, solid. It was solid. Yeah. And I was hoping they came back with a Ford and, and use uh, DiCaprio as you know the Godfather before, you know, yeah. growing up, so to speak. Right? I thought he would be, a, but they never got there. They talked about it. Yeah, those are those are some, those are some. Those are some good ones. I right think Mario there. Puzo yeah. was working on a book before he died that was just called Straight Up the Corleone Family. Yeah. And I don't think he finished the book before he died, but a guy that was working on the book with him finished the book for him, but I've gotcha. I've never read it. Yeah. No, those are good. Sopranos? Oh, well, I mean, it's How great was that series, right? I mean, yeah, I, yeah, you yeah. Know, I, love that. I wanted to ask you about that. I'm like, that's a no-brainer. I didn't even have to text you or email you that. That's a no-brainer. That was such I, a great I, show, man. He never had so the makings of a varsity player. Oh, my God. No <laughs> I shit. I love that line. Oh, that's was, so good. Uncle Junior There's, was the best. Wasn't Uncle Junior the best? Those thick Coke bottle glasses. <laughs> Sometimes when I go places and they ask for my name on the cup, I tell yeah. them Corrado. Oh, yeah. And they're like, Carado. how do you spell it? I go, figure it out. I'm the only Corrado here. <laughs> Just to see, if they, it, see if they write Corrado on the cup. Oh, I love it. You know who was one of my, all the characters were fantastic. One of, a fa one of my favorite actors, um, you know, always played the same, similar part. He maybe did a comedy or two. It was Frank Vincent. Oh, yeah, yeah, Frank yeah. Frank Vincent. Vincent. So that guy died looking fantastic, you know, tanned up, the white hair, the great teeth. It's like... That guy was fantastic he's in one of my, movies. He's in one of my favorite, uh, outside of Raging Bull and all those great oh, movies. Oh, God, Raging Bull, too. Yeah. He, yeah. He's in one of my favorite comedies with uh, Danny DeVito and Joe Piscopo. It's called Wise Guys. Oh, I saw that. That's a good one. I haven't Danny seen DeVito. it in a while, though. I forgot yeah. about that movie. Danny DeVito's Italian. Joe Piscopo is Jewish. Right. And, and they're best friends. And they, 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 they screw up on the boss's uh, horse bet. And the boss sends Frankie the Fixer, which is Captain Lou Albano, after the two of those Captain guys take Lou. off on a run. Yeah. Oh shoot, man! So it's you a good movie. Did you watch any old time wrestling? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was actually I was talking to a buddy today because there's a horror convention in Phoenix this weekend yeah. right, called Mad Monster, and Papa Shango is going to be there. No kidding. And yeah. I was talking to my buddy about Papa Shango and how when I was a kid. I remember Papa Shango blew the voodoo dust right. in, in the Ultimate Warrior's face. Oh. And, I, and, I, and I went to my mom and I'm like, Ma, the Ultimate Warrior's sick. He took him off on a gurney. He's going to die. He may die. Yeah. And she looked at me and she's like, this is, it's not real. Is not... I was like, it's not real. It's like telling you there's no Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, it was like a Santa moment. I'm like, what? Uh, dude, I'm still a wrestling guy. You know, watch it relig religiously, mm -hmm. excuse me, every week. If you look in my background in the corner, those figurines... Yeah, I saw that. I, I look like the Ultimate Warrior on the left there. There he is. They're all wrestlers. Yeah. They're current yeah, and yeah. old wrestlers. And uh, I had, uh, I would say, the luxury. I benefit. My, my One of my best friends out here, my best friend out here, I should say, owned a gym. And when he was doing renovations, we went down to Warrior. Uh, he had a gym. Yeah, Shea. Off of Shea and Scott yeah, I remember, remember that? Yeah. So he let us train there for free because my buddy Tom owned a gym. He was one of the coolest dudes, man. And... Uh, 
you know, he had a fallout with Vince, and he came back, as you probably know. He did WrestleMania yeah. the next night. He came back here and freaking had a heart attack and died. It was like, shit. Yeah, my, my favorite buddy, wrestlers. A friend of mine delivered pizza and delivered pizza to his house, and he came yeah. to the door in, like, the full-on, like, almost like leather pants and, like, the full-on outfit. He was did like, it? oh, this no is shit. the ultimate. He's like, you're the ultimate warrior. Here's your yeah. pizza. Yo, no <laughs> shit. Yeah, and he yeah. had at, at that at that gym. I remember walking in and behind the uh, front desk, he had one of those massive dogs, Mastiff, Brutus Mastiff, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. what they're called? Dog looked like it weighed about like one eighty or whatever. I went, holy shit! But he was laid back, dude, cool guy. A lot yeah. of those guys are laid back, you know. They go in, they go into the ring and they perform, and then they come out well, not and the, they do their thing. Not, not the Iron Sheik. I interviewed him oh, years ago. Oh, oh, did you? Yeah, I the, interviewed. He, he was a nutcase, huh? Oh, yeah. I lost the video because my buddy uploaded it on his YouTube page at the time. I didn't have a YouTube page, and he uploaded it, and he something happened. He lost his whole page, but uh, uh, the Ultimate Warrior was there. I'm not the Ultimate Warrior. Um, the Iron Sheik and um, Hacksaw... No. Hacksaw, Hacksaw Jim Honky, Duggan. Honky Tonk Man. Honky Tonk Man, the old Elvis. <laughs> and he lives here in town, too. Honky oh, Tonk does man. he? I didn't know that. Yeah. I know Kevin Nash did, but I didn't know he did. Yeah. yeah Honky Tonk Man lives here. And, and he, Honky Tonk Man was drunk and yelling at me. And the Iron Sheik was, I, I mean, I, we got a nice show here. I'm not going to even say what yeah. he was saying, yeah. but he was really <laughs> talking bad about Macho Man, how Macho Man took all his drugs and all kinds no, of crazy sh- stuff. Yeah, there was, was a lot of shit that was on behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah he, he lost it for years. I remember him. Uh, Doing a couple Stern shows too with Howard, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, make you, know, you humble. <laughs> oh, he was so good though, wasn't he? He'd come out with Nikolai Volkov. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh shit, I could talk about that for hours. That's good stuff. Well, I'm glad you like wrestling. I still, you know what I would say? It's, it's still one of the. It is the number one cable entertainment show out there. And then when you yeah. were talking about your return on the money for producing, you know, for production of, of uh, music. And you know mm-hmm. what you get on the dollar and cutting out the middle person. That's the one thing Vince McMahon has done so well in terms of running a business is he he cut out the middleman with, with cable and with the, with yeah. uh with satellite. That's why he has his own app now. Yeah, yeah. You pay for the app and all everything goes to him. It's almost like, you know, hundred percent profit, if you will, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, yeah. nine ninety nine a month adds up because people get all the pay per views and everything. I just with it whether you like him or not, I know he's a different cat too and Triple H has taken over, but um great businessman. Oh great yeah. Businessman. There's there's no other you know other way Well, we that. wouldn't have wrestling today that we have if it wasn't for him no. taking over and, and, and branching out across the country. What he's done really kind of unifying everything. Yeah. Know? And I'm a big UFC guy, too, and Dana White, he's built his brand off of what Vince McMahon did. He took the model, and he plugged it into a professional MMA sport, and it works. Yeah. So yeah. kudos to him. All right, wrapping it up, we got to talk about of Italian food, of course. And I'd ask you for a couple of your favorite stops. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few. You got, got a few? few. <laughs> yeah. my uh, I think uh, probably one of my favorite restaurants in town is uh, they have a couple locations, but the one location is my I like a lot better than the others. It's called uh, Tutasanti. It's on 64th Street in Greenway. Uh, they, I haven't I haven't been there. And when I saw yeah, that on another, the list, okay, yeah. They got another location on Northern and like 12th Street area. Yeah, uh, all the same family, but yeah, they're different cooks. The recipes are a little different between all of them. The 64th Street and Greenway one. They you go order raviolis and they they literally make the ravioli fresh on the spot and and give it to you. Now, down by me in South Scottsdale, I love pasta brioni. Yeah, that's that. I've been there many times. That place is fantastic. Yep, really good. They even do uh, the to-go side where you can eat in there. Yeah. Sometimes you don't want to get all dressed up. I got a pizza from there not long ago. It was really good. Service Uh, is good. Food's quality. Yeah, I went way back when I worked off a Camelback in Scottsdale Road, so we'd go there quite often. Yeah, 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 I've been there in a while, but great food. The Falcos Falcos is my jam. Yeah, that that place uh, is a deli up the street from me here. They it's better than any deli in town because oh, listen, this place is like uh, Romanelli's that are good that make Romanelli's good. Yep, yep. Yep. But no uh, Guido's, but nobody turns over the inventory that the Falcos does. So when you get Brajou or or a super sad, a gabagool, and a guy slicing it, it's not a piece of a meat that's been sitting in the deli counter yep. for Fresh. two weeks.
they're still being sliced on. They're going yeah. through so much that they, uh, it's the pooch. <laughs> Lord, so going you, They're going through so much that it, it, it's the father's going. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. What do you got, a Chihuahua back hey! there? That's uh, Sweepy. I don't know what she is. What is Sweepy? Krista. What kind of dog is it, Sweepy? Mo <laughs> Maltese and Schnauzer. Maltese and Schnauzer mix. All right. I, I, got, uh, I got two little Chihuahuas with my guard dogs over here. I never remember <laughs> what she is. I always call her a long time ago, so. <laughs> No, that's good, man. And DeFalco's is off of what? Is it Thomas and Scottsdale Road? Uh, yeah, Osborne. Uh, Osborne, right? Yeah. Oak, Oak, Oak. Forgive me, Oak and Oak. Scottsdale. Yep. Road. Yep. Just, it's in between Thomas and, and McDowell. Yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, listen, man. Good stuff. Before I let you go, I first of all, I appreciate you joining. It's of been course, a I appreciate you. Had a blast. Anything you want to get out there? Anything else you want to plug? I know totalgavone.com. Want to get that out there for your clothing line and all the other fun Italian stuff that you can get off of there, donations <laughs> uh, as well, right? Uh, yeah, the GoFundMe, the, yeah, the GoFundMe page. You know, um, yeah, if you can just put that link, you know, anywhere for the GoFundMe. I'm gonna, and... I'll send that link out, you know, uh, for cool. Ryan, and I'll get that out there. This show will be uh, on any, you know, all the po podcast uh, platforms. Cool on Saturday. I'll have it up on YouTube Saturday as well. So uh, I want to, again, thanks again, man. Good seeing you. You look good. Yeah, you too, well, buddy. We still, we're healthy, the same buddy. Haircut. we still got the same haircut. I got my <laughs> own stuff back there. I hide it. Hey, it's nice and easy, brother. That's what I, yep. you know. That's the uh, truth. You know, like three, four years. What is like? I went in for uh, spinal sur neck, spinal neck surgery in 2014. I hadn't had much left anyways. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, now's the time to just kind of. Let it all go, right? Yep. And even even at our old place of work, walking into the building and coming in late to the office, soaking wet on the head, walking in, you walk in, you put a nice cold water on your head, paper towel, yep. baby. We, we we look good. We don't need that gel and shit anymore. I I, had a, I took a picture with a buddy, <laughs> and the both of us were really going bald. And I still got that picture. And I had like a couple hairs like up in the front. <laughs> And I looked at that picture and I said, you know, now's the time for me to get rid of this. And, and my buddy, I gave him a copy of the picture and he looked at it. I didn't even say nothing to him. And he goes, you know, now's the time for me to maybe start shaving my That's head. Like, right, for both of us, we got to do this. And you did it together. And it's That's the best it. thing ever, man. I'd never go back. Yeah, I do. I miss one well, thing. I would say if I had that thick hairline and, you know, the good thick head of hair, we could gel it up and stuff. I'd be all right with that, of course. But, I, yeah. I miss one thing about hair. And it's the stupidest, silliest thing. I had big, thick, curly Italian hair. As yeah. much as I tried to like straighten it out, it just could do by it. The end of the day, All it just, wiry and yeah. curly. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, I was like uh, uh, the guy from uh, Welcome Back, Cotter. Uh, oh yeah, Gabe Kaplan. Esposito. No, what the other go Kaplan? Oh, yeah. oh yeah, the other kid, Juan yeah. Epstein. Juan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I miss getting when you go to like a hair salon, you get a haircut, and they wash your hair. Right. That, yeah, that's a feeling I'll never have again. Well, you know? it's therapy too. It's therapeutic. You know, yeah, I tell yeah. my wife that I used to even go up to the V's up here, and I said, like, you know, it's something just going in, hanging out. It's a guys' club too, right? You go in a hair salon, you getting pampered and every hair salon, barber shop, and uh, getting pampered, and it yeah. feels good, right? Somebody washing your hair, cutting it, making it nice and clean. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. So now it's just facial Those stuff if we gone. wanted to, and that's it, right? I, I get to, I get to shave once in a while. There I you like go, that. and I haven't done that yeah. yet. Believe it or yeah. not, I have to do that. I like that. I go to this. There's, there's so many really nice places out there. I, I really should go to one of the really nice places. I go to yeah. this like little ghetto place on <laughs> Granite Reef and McDowell. Okay. And this uh, the little Italian guy is so small in the place. He got to stand on a box to get up around me <laughs> and the whole place is plastered with Marilyn Monroe posters. And then if you go lean back in the chair, the ceiling has Marilyn Monroe posters. Nope. He's got a statue of Marilyn Monroe. In no the place. kidding. It's Damn. like this. Oh, it's a total little old school little shot. It's actually yeah. a nice little place. Yeah. But I want to go to one of those places. You can smoke cigars, and right? Whiskey, you know, they give you whiskey, kind of, right? Our kind of yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, listen, man, thanks again. You too, buddy. And Thank you. We'll we'll catch up on the other side when we're free of all of this for a drink or two and a cigar. How's that sound? You got it. You got it. On Definitely. me, brother. Thanks again, right. man. We'll right. catch Thank you soon. You. Take care, Danny. Bye-bye. Take care. All right. And so there you go. So 
Thanks again, Danny. Great interview, man. We we could have probably talked for hours. I didn't want to do that to the point of boredom for anybody, but uh, great interview with Danny. As I wrap up this week's show, show number 35, I am going to get there. I'm going to get there, guys. This is, I want to say mid-October. We're not quite at, quite at mid-October yet, but as we move into the last quarter of the year and roll over, I can't believe a year is going to go by that I decided to do this podcast and, and it basically kicked it off in February. And uh, that time is around the right around the corner, so to speak. So uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for support. Thanks to everybody I interview, man, because this, this is what makes it fun for me, to be honest with you. I enjoy doing the solos, but I also love the guests as well. As I wrap up this week's show, I just want to caution the NFL on making the right decisions on what to do. And I know in this this political climate that we're in right now, and I'm very favorable in terms of keeping businesses going, small businesses, and keeping things running. But I also don't want to be held hostage to, if you will, the fact that the TV uh, and the political things that are going on in that world of entertainment are what's driving the NFL to push through a lot of these games. And if you see what hear what some of the people behind the scenes, not the national media, you're not going to get this shit from a Schefter or, or an Ian Rappaport, or even a Mike Florio. Be the behind-the-scenes people, that, so to speak, the locals, the local cover people, um, they're the ones. They're the ones that are going to kind of really give you the insight, the inside information in terms of what's going on out there and how they feel about it and how the teams feel about what's being done out there. Health is of the utmost importance. I want these games played. I love sports. I know this has been a tough year, and even with sports coming back, major dip in NBA ratings falling off the chart like none other. But guess what? This is an off year. I'm enjoying the NBA playoffs. We'll revisit the NBA next week. We'll see where this lands for the Lakers. I'm sure they're going to close it out. I have some thoughts on where this lands LeBron and the all-time list of, so to speak, GOAT. And some of my back and forth with some of the people at FS1 over this past week. I want to share those thoughts next week when it's over. The other thing I want to bring up on the NBA, I am a big Russell Westbrook fan. And there's always a lot to be said depending on, you know, who you talk to, who you listen to, that he's not a team guy. He's this, he's that. He's a great team guy. A lot of these players are a little bit eccentric and a little bit uh, misunderstood at times. But here's the thing. I, I look at what people do for other people. That's kind of how I look at it. And I look for what people do when they're on, not on the court. And this guy gives it 110% on the court. I don't know a lot, a lot about what he does off the court other than does a lot of uh, charity work. He was doing a lot of stuff in Oklahoma. He didn't want to leave there. He's the one guy that wanted to stay versus his buddy KD. He put in everything and anything of his passion to be there. But... It was reported this week, not by him because he didn't want to be reported. He left a very uh, nice sum of money for a tip for all of the people that took care of him while he was in the bubble within the hotel. And he didn't want the amount reported. Obviously, somebody came forward, and I'm glad they did. Uh, and he left a tip of $8,000. So, you know, I love to hear the good stories. I hope a lot of the other players are doing the same. I really do, because these people are uh, they're in a tough position. Uh, I can only imagine, you know, working uh, those hotels, restaurants, whatever, you know, whatever else um, they're servicing there in the hotel. So kudos goes out to uh, Russell Westbrook for me. Um, as I close out the show this week, Danny and I talked about, you know, Eddie V, Eddie Van Halen, and um, it's a shame uh, it's a shame that somebody goes so early. Uh, he will go down as a legend, obviously, and it will, it will be discussed as whether the top three or very top guitarists there was out there. I grew up with them, as I mentioned earlier. I mentioned my story. So thoughts and prayers go out to uh, the Van Halen family. And, you know, every day matters. Every day matters. Let's just always... Do what we can to take care of ourselves and each other through trying times, um, through times of need like there is now for a lot of people. 
Uh, we just want to make sure that we're doing our best to support each other out there. And I feel like um, this is a place we need to get to for 2021. I'll leave it at that. So thoughts and prayers go out to the, to the uh, Eddie Van Halen family. And as you might expect, I'm going to close out this week's show with Eddie Van Halen. Once again, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for listening. This podcast will also be on YouTube Rob's Real and Ridiculous podcast on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, all of the local platforms. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks to Danny, TotalGavone.com. That's Danny Marianino, TotalGavone.com. Look for him. He's got some great material out there. He's got some funny books out there. I skimmed through a few things online. Watch some of his content uh, and music. Super guy. Glad we had him on. Let's close it out now with the one and only Eddie Van Halen solo on the guitar. Eddie V, quite the legend. And with that, I am officially out. God bless. Peace.